Perfect. So amazing to have you uh, with us, Stacey. Um, Stacey Chalemi, for anyone that doesn't know, um, you've been on the Dr. Oz show. You're, oh, I'm going to say, a bestseller. It said 20 times. Am I right? With 20 times bestseller? I had author. a lot of bestselling books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> author, so, uh, author, writer. You have your own blog. You talk about herbal. You talk about wellness. You talk about diet, nutrition. I mean, you are like this encapsulation of health, wellness, and information uh, about just a healthy living and healthy life. And uh, this week, we're talking about diet decoder and and how people can basically look at their diet as as the main way to start getting into a healthier lifestyle is yeah. looking at the diet as you know and what are we putting into our what are we putting into our mouths not only was what we're putting into our minds but what we're putting into our mouths as well right but you've been such a big supporter of ours and you know I'm just a big fan of you and I'm just so happy that you're able to spend some time with us today um, to talk about you know diet and, and nutrition and what is, what does diet mean to you? Well, how do you how do you define diet? Like what what is it that like that first thing that goes off your mind? Diet. What what is that I, for you? When I think of the word diet, I don't think of I don't agree with that word that that concept. I agree yeah. with healthy living. You know because it's a lifestyle change and it has a lot of components. It's not just what we put in our mouth. It's how much sleep we get. It's how we're taking care of our bodies. It's how we take care of our stress. People don't realize, but 70% of illnesses is caused by stress. So when you think of the world we live in, how could we avoid stress? Stress is everywhere. So, you know, there's a lot of components that goes into wellness and goes into good health. And of course, everything we put in our, our body, you know, we, we should think of our body as a sanctuary because everything we put in it plays a big role on how we're going to feel, how our mind's going to focus, how our body is going to be feel like, and also, you know, our spirituality, because everything is connected. It's just like thinking of like a chiropractor. If your spine is out of whack, you're going to have aches and pains you're, until you get adjusted and everything's back into place. You know, that's how our body is. We have to treat it like we are sanctuary. The foods we put in our body, people don't realize, but you know, there's so much processed foods out there. There are so much foods out there. Everyone's in a rush, rush. Let's throw it in the microwave, get it done with, or, you know, it's pre-made, but it says healthy, you know, it says, you know, lose, lose, lose 10 pounds in 30 days, eat our food, you know, and all that food, when you go into your body, if your body doesn't recognize it, your body doesn't know what to do with it. So it can't break it down properly. It stores it. So what happens when you have food that has toxins in it and you're, it's getting stored in your body? It's leaching onto your organs. It's going into your, your body. It's, it's, you know, some of it's turned into fat. So it, your organs are becoming lethargic. You're starting to feel tired and sluggish. You're wondering why you feel fatigued. And then your body is not is not reacting well. So then your, your immune system is going down. So you see how it all interacts and it all plays. And if you're not feeling good, you can't focus. You're, you're, you start to become foggy. And there are specific foods that can actually make you feel foggy. So, you know, what we put in our body plays a big role on how we feel because we need to try to be at our very best because it plays a role on our longevity. It plays a role on preventing illness and it plays a role on if you have a condition keeping that condition at a plateau where you can live a sustainable life and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think, you know, it's really interesting how much, how much that plays a part, you know, in, in diseases and chronic diseases, but, but cortisol and stress plays a part in your sleep patterns. And also yes. that that's connected. So all of this is all connected. So all connected. how much do you see where somebody is, is like doing like, a spot check and they're saying, well, I just want this stubborn belly fat to go away, but they're just interested in a fat burner that just works on the belly fat and a wrap or something like that. And they're not looking at the, the total picture of everything that's, that's involved in creating the belly fat to begin with. That's what you're saying. Look at yeah. more of a holistic, uh, which is really your premise, right? A holistic uh, approach yes. to, to, to nutrition, not diet, nutrition. Right. 
And I, I think people, you know, they get angry. They're taking their goal and they, you know, we live in a billion dollar business, you know, vitamins, supplements, all this stuff is great, you know, and everybody has claims that, you know, lose weight and this and that. But people are taking these fat burners and taking these things and they're saying, hey, I'm not getting any, any, any skinnier. I don't feel good. You know, it's, it's not doing anything for me. And then you say, okay, what do you eat? You know, and then they're like, well, I had pizza for lunch today and, you know, I ate this, you know, cereal and it's loads of sugar, you know, and it's like, well, you know what? It doesn't matter how many fat burners you take. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're not going to incorporate a healthy lifestyle and plus sleep helps you because while your body is renewing, that's the time when your body burns fat. You know, you, after you stop eating at a certain time and you go to bed, your body is renewing itself. It's recharging. It's the whole, the whole body has a process when you sleep, you know, sleep is important to get those seven eight hours of sleep is really important you usually go you should go towards the eight hours if you can and you know this this all plays like a huge role in in our health you know we talked about uh we talked in a previous call about um our health and you know i was just looking at something about sedentary life and how most americans right now are living in a more sedentary life that internet and technologies are providing this sedentary life. And then blood flow is part of this sedentary life. And we're not clearing things because we're sedentary. Yeah. And then how much, how much do you think the, the role of even walking and exercise pertains to this holistic approach to, to nutrition and diet? Oh, it's very important. Exercise is, is extremely important. We need to consistently be circulate our blood flow because without circulation you start to see muscle tightness and cramping and then you start to see that your, your body starts to ache and you start to get pains at an early earlier age you need to constantly utilize that that blood flow in your body and even 15 minutes of walking around the block once or twice can be enough for some people so they can sustain a, a healthy lifestyle you know you don't have to be at the gym five six hours a day lifting you know these enormous weights to actually you know keep your body fit you could have it a minimum of 15 minutes you know if you if you can go longer and you, your body can sustain a longer exercise period go for it you know get those that 45 minutes that half an hour you know, do a recovery or, or, or two recoveries in a week. You know, th that's great if you can do it, but everybody is at a different plateau and a different a different level. So you have to really go with what your body can do. That's why when you see people when they do yoga, being when they do different poses, some people are doing certain ones and some people are doing other ones because you can't all you can't all, you can't compare yourself to what others are doing because you really have to go with your body and you can't push your body. You can only do it when your body's ready to do it. Yeah, I think the, the you know one of the one or two of those yoga poses would just basically break my neck. So I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I was doing any handstands or anything else like that. You know, I, I might do you know a sun pose that might be great. You know, but, <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta you gotta take it take it where you're at and and just do something. I think doing something is better than doing nothing. And a lot of people are doing nothing. Yeah. So, you know, even even just moderate walking, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, for me, I couldn't I couldn't run at 265 pounds because, right. you know, my knees would just hurt too much to do that. Yeah. And also my diet was causing inflammation. So I have inflammation in my joints and then I'm trying to run on top of that. It was just like a really bad combination. So moderate walking and then changing of the diet helped with the inflammation that I'm dealing with. Yeah. How do you how do you think when you, you, know, you talk you touched on um uh, chronic diseases and stuff like that. I know you've had your own personal challenges. You wrote books about this. So um, uh, the gut biome and chronic diseases and diet, do you see like the, the common thread just between the gut biome and epilepsy, uh, you know? Oh, a hundred percent. I'll give you a, a, an a idea how important it is. So when I had, um, when my epilepsy was really bad, I was taking about 12 seizures a month. So I, I was trying to take, uh, the doctors had me on and off different medications. They were trying to find the right cocktail, the right blend, the right dosages. And, you know, I, I kept having seizures. So then I started to change my lifestyle. I started to change the way I ate. I started to look at how much sodium intake I was looking at, how much sugar I was, I was um, intaking. You know, I started to eat more 
cleaner, more green. I started to get more sleep. I started to learn different techniques to handle stress. And then I started to detox. So when I started to detox my body, I started to incorporate different probiotics, prebiotics. I started to look at, at my gut and I started cleansing and trying to balance my gut. And I, I went into gut health and I looked... And once I start to focus on gut health, my seizures went from 12 seizures to nine to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, to being controlled. So as soon as I started to focus on gut health and I started to balance my gut and I started to detox the toxins out of my body, I, you know, along with the other stuff I, I incorporated and I, my seizures stopped and I got my life back. And I still had to take medication. I still take medication, but I was taking medication before and then I was trying healthy lifestyle and, and it's still, I still was having seizures. And I also did exercise and I wasn't in the beginning, I wasn't doing anything strenuous. I was doing meditation in the morning to relax myself, to calm myself, to get my stress level down. And then I would do some yoga. And then once some days I would be on the treadmill. And like you said, sometimes I would walk around the block. And just to interject, I had a friend who just walked around her lake. She had a lake in her community. She walked around it three times, changed her eating habits and lost 30 pounds. So there you go. 15, you know, it, it took her about 15, 20 minutes of walking. But yeah, I, I actually got my chronic illness under control by focusing on gut health. Amazing. Amazing. And and so, you know, if, if there's someone out there that's facing a challenge, you know, epilepsy is nothing uh, short of disabling. I mean, it's just a disabling um, disease and it controls your life. I mean, obviously it sequesters you to the home. You're having, you know, just driving a car, things we take for granted, you know, how does, how does the depression like fit within that? And you're saying, you know, how can I make a change? So a lot of people might be watching this and saying, how can I make a change when I have got this challenge, this challenge, this challenge? How did, where did you find the intestinal fortitude, <laughs> not just gut health, but intestinal fortitude to say, you know what, I have to make a change and I have to make a change today. And furthermore, how to stick to that, how to stick to that change. I think you get to a point in life where it, when you, when you look in the mirror and you don't like who you see and you don't like the life you're living, you have to, you, you're. I was determined to find that answer. I I became, you know, I was going to figure out a way that I could get my life back. And, and that's how I looked at it. I, I did not want epilepsy to control me. I want to be in control of my own life. I was not going to let a condition stop me from living the life that I had in my head. I had, I you know, I in my head, I had that goal. This is who I want to be. This is what I want to become. These are my dreams. I'm going to make these dreams a reality. And I just, I became resilient and I became determined. I set goals for myself. I set short-term goals, long-term goals, because in, in a previous conversation, we were talking about, it doesn't happen overnight. We have to make tweaks. So, you know, I started making tweaks and, I, and in a couple, you know, in a couple of months, like three months, I started noticing some little changes in my health. Six months, I started noticing more changes. Nine months, I could definitely see a difference. And in 12 months, I felt like a new person. I start, I felt like I was actually 20 to 30 years old, younger. I got all this energy that I never had you know, before, but because the, the medications were weighing me down, the foods I was, you know, I wasn't getting enough exercise. I started exercising more. I was on the treadmill. I, I stood up on the, on the fifth, level 15 the entire time going uphill. That's how much energy I got just from taking care of myself, balancing my gut eating right, exercising, and and just doing the whole lifestyle change that we talked about. Because it's not one thing, I, it's everything. And and you got to get to that point where you just say, I'm sick of living this life. I don't want to settle. That's the key. Don't settle. Everybody has the ability to change. We all have the ability to change. Some people fear change. Some people fear failure. But listen, it, it, are you happy with who you see in the mirror? Are you happy with the way you feel? Do you want to feel like this the rest of your life? You know, there are some people that can't even get out of bed. Like you mentioned, you were at a point where it was hard for you to walk and you couldn't exercise. Does a person want to feel like that the rest of their life? Imagine if you feel like that now. Imagine how you're going to feel like in 10, 15 years from now. Is that the way you want to spend the rest of your life? And you have to ask yourself that question. And if the answer is no, because no normal person wants to feel like that, then let's make a change. 
You could do it with the proper guidance, the proper, you know, um, help from people and the right, the, the right foods and the right supplements and the right way of taking care of yourself, incorporate a little exercise. You could be a new person and it's not hard to do. It's baby steps, breaking it down little by little. It may sound overwhelming, but if you break it down and you do a little each week and you start making little tweaks, you're going to notice a difference. And that overwhelming picture is going to be nothing after you you get to the end of the rainbow because you're like, wow, I was so overwhelmed in the beginning, but I had someone maybe who helped me and I made all these little tweaks and now I feel great, you know? And, in, you know, there are 70 year olds that could do cartwheels, you know? Don't you want to be like that? You know, I had a woman in my yoga class, she could do splits. I can't even do a split, you know? <laughs> you know, did, did you ever think that, you know, having you know i think a testament and i'm going to ask you this question and let me rephrase it you know you're being featured on television you're standing next to dr oz you're you're having this surreal experience of being on set and being invited and and everything else and you're publishing all these books and did you did you ever think that like you're talking about baby steps but you know you began by changing your life and then you began to then influence other people's lives through your ins being that inspiring story. Did you ever think that like when you were facing, you know, these getting out of bed kind of challenges that you could actually be on a set and, you know, and, and be in the public eye like that? Did you ever think that? Was that ever a goal for you? Like you said, short-term goal, long-term goal. Was that one of those things or no? Just happened. I I would no, I it was I went through a depression. You know, I, I felt very mm. depressed when I when I got to the point because I had mentioned to you earlier when my seizures were not controlled, I didn't drive for fifteen years and I felt confined in my own home and it was feeling like you were in prison and you know, I I felt very depressed. My my I, but I, I was determined to figure out a way. And I, you know, I that I that's when I, I said said to myself, I'm gonna make changes. And then as I made changes, I started feeling great and I wanted to share it with the world because I realized if I could do this with my condition, because this pertained to all can everything I was doing was not for epilepsy. You could do this any condition you could do this even healthy people can do this and feel even better or sustain their healthiness and and live a, a longer life by doing these things so that's when I started to write everything down I wrote my first book and I got an email back from somebody and they said I was on the verge of suicide I read your book I followed your regiment and I just want to say thank you because you saved my life and that's when the light bulb went off I was like wow you know what this is my purpose in life. It's it's to help others. It's to show others. Because I, even when I was blogging, people were responding, you know, hey, you missed the day. I didn't get your article, you know, and people wanted to hear about it. And I was like, wow, you know, so then I and I and I happened to meet an herbalist while I was working and he needed a lot of research and writing done. And I started to like do all this research and writing and, and I, I found out so much information about herbal supplements and natural healing and holistic living. And that's when I started applying a lot of these things to my own life. And that's when my health started changing. So that's when I really got motivated and I started writing books. It took me like five or six years. I wrote the complete herbal guide. I, and then I started talking about the, the, the power of positivity because you can't get through anything in life if you're negative. You have to sustain a positive attitude. Positive attitude is key. If, out of every negative thing that happens to us, you have to pull something positive out of it. If you, you know, there is, if, if something happens to you today, you say, okay, what, what did I learn from it? Did it make me stronger? Did it give me the knowledge to make me a better person for tomorrow? You have to just turn things around and focus on the positive and set those short-term goals up, set those long-term goals up. And you need to just go, like we said, baby steps. Because I did start a depression. I was depressed about my life, but then I said, I had it. I want a better life. I'm not going to let it get, I'm not going to let my, my condition control me. And that's for overweight people or people with anxiety or people who suffer in depression or speak with diabetes. You have to get a point where you have to feel like I'm not, I don't like the way I'm living. When I wake up, I have aches and pains. You know, I, you know, people who have gout and their, 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 their foot or their toe is swollen and they can't walk. 
life doesn't have to be like that. Let's change our diet. Let's see what supplements we can add. Let's see what type of technologies are out there that can make me feel better and apply it, try it, you know, and, and, and if it's, if it's okay with your doctor and your doctor doesn't have a problem with it, you know, if you're taking other medications, because I always say if you're taking stats or you're taking some type of medication, talk to your doctor first, but there's a lot of great supplements and natural products out there that can do wonders to your body. And there are a lot of other things that we can incorporate that can make you feel like a good new person. And wouldn't it be nice to, you know, go through life and you had your obstacles, but overcome them and that get to the point where you could actually live the life you wanted to. Like, like I think of Disney when I say that, you know, make your dreams a reality. You know, why not? It's possible, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely possible. And I think you're a living testament to that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to have you in our sphere and, and, and to be able to, to be able to have spend some time with you and share a little bit about uh, your story and, and, and what you're doing. But I think, you know, I think it'd be great if people can um, go to your website, uh, learn more about you, um, and tune into your podcast. The name of your podcast is The Advisor with Stacy Chalemi. There you go, The Advisor with Stacy Chalemi. So, is that on where? Uh, that's available everywhere. Is that available on? It's, it's available on all platforms. Yes, all platforms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna have to put that in the. We'll put that in the chat so that people can uh, can tune into you and get more of this amazing advice and an amazing inspiration, motivation. I know I'm, I'm touched by it uh, every time we engage. So thank you so very much for, for spending some time. And, um, you know, we hope that uh, we'll see you on, a, on another one of our, uh, our sessions again, you know. So thank you so very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And I got to say, too, you got to give yourself credit because you came a long way. And, you know, you shared your stories on other podcasts. And I, I got to give you credit. And I got to say kudos to you because you came a long way and you overcame a lot of things yourself. So you did it pretty much the same way I did it. And so, you know, I want to give you a clap and an applaud also. <laughs> thank, thank you. Right. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. So and definitely we're strong willed people and we just found our way. But I think like you said, you know, it's it's small steps in the right direction every day. And then yeah. you gain momentum. You gain momentum and then you look back and you say, Well, I really did clear through a lot of things in my life and I'm glad I did. Uh, either uncomfortable or, or or not. So Yeah. Um, and I think I think, you know, before we go, the key is when they start to feel better and they see improvements that's when they're going to be even more motivated to continue and to go up the hill and win the battle. Absolutely. So win the battle, Stacey Chalemi. Thank you so very much. <laughs> you're and, welcome. Um, good, good luck on your trip. I know you're preparing for a trip. So thank you again yes. for spending some time with me and, and today oh, and welcome. sharing your story. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right.